Thanks for listening to the Unscripted Dreams podcast. If you enjoy the show and want more, please join us on Patreon for exclusive episodes and videos. If you're looking for episode clips, please check out our YouTube page at the Unscripted Dreams podcast. Enjoy the show. <laughs> As we know, life is full of surprises, both good and bad. The day-to-day journey is full of unforeseen obstacles, and sometimes it's hard to see our way through. Beyond the norm and mundane or where unscripted dreams live, join us for thought-provoking discussions and interviews to help us navigate through the fog and create our own path. We are the Unscripted Dream Podcast, operating outside the margins to motivate and inspire our audience. Mm-hmm. So, t- so today's episode is literally this is a holiday Christmas special. So, I'm gonna let Marcus kick it off for us. All right, so I just want to throw something together. I mean, if you don't, so I know everybody does not participate in the holiday. So, this is there's a there's a particular subject matter that. I'm trying to kind of di- di- discuss, so it's it's applicable. So it's not going to be a uh, it's not going to be a situation where, you know, we're talking about things that can apply, uh, depending on, you know, where where you're coming from. So this goes this goes beyond the the holidays. Just wanted to address some things that um, I've been seeing, especially now that you know we're dealing with COVID and things like this, so we understand that. This time of the year is, you know, it can be stressful for a lot of people. But I think with everything that's been going on, there's this additional level of stress that typically is not there during this time. So I know for a lot of people, you know, if you've lost your job or if your pay has been cut, maybe you're doing work that, you know, you don't want to do, doing some things that you've never had to do before. Or maybe this is a, we're approaching the time of the year where, uh, maybe if you've lost somebody that has always been around, and this is the first, this is the first time that you're going through this season without those uh those people. So, just want to you know take take the time to discuss that and uh, hopefully put some things into perspective as we uh you know as we move forward into the uh, into the next ne- next year. So, Joe, one of the things that I see, you know, I have a have a problem, you know, I have a real problem with this is that like around the holidays, I know around this time of the year, people, it's like a crunch. And I see people, like I've seen people stress out around this time of the year because they're worried about getting people gifts and all these other things like that. And, you know, it's really, a lot of this stuff is, uh, you know, it's all tied into consumerism. Uh, But I just, I just want to kind of get your view on these things and kind of see what, like, when you think about this time of the year, what are you, what, what activities and things are you seeing other people engage in? Um, it depends on what end of the spectrum you are. Are you copping or are you selling? Um, this is an opportune time for small businesses and, um, any business rather to capitalize on their dollars. Uh, and from a consumer standpoint, which I'm 90%, 95%, I'm a consumer. Um, I would say that this opportune time to spend too, not just because you're spending on yourself, but you're spending because you're supposedly spending for the love of others, right? Because it's Christmas. So what I see a lot that's really going on out here. As far as consumerism, (laughs) I'm seeing a lot of people do some outrageous things as far as like um, buying shoes, buying Jordans. Um, Nothing's wrong with that, but there's been an increase as far as release dates. If anybody's been paying attention closely, there's more and more product being released around this time this year. Um, Not to mention you got the PS5 and the Xbox race. There's a lot of content being released from there, too. So with those things off bat, 
those are probably like the hotter items that's out that I'm noticing off bat. The other items, which is like TVs or whatnot, you know, those kind of deals are kind of like dying out. There's still some amazing deals. Like I think I saw a deal around Black Friday or something like that, where it's like a 65 inch for like um, under $400. That's crazy. But <laughs> but what I'm saying is like, <clears throat> there's not too much to offer out there. Like there isn't much new under the sun besides the age of the new systems or for video games coming out and some clothing product um, like footwear. So it's it's nothing really extravagant, but, you know, nonetheless, people think that they're getting deals because it's Christmas time. Man, these aren't any deals. <laughs> <laughs> but all right, so. I used to work, uh, you know, I used to work in retail. I remember back when I worked at Kmart. And I would wonder, Joe, you, you've been into the, the Kmart that I worked in. And I would wonder, how is this store still open? Like, I would walk into work some days. I'd be like, how is this thing staying open? But the one thing I learned through working there is that most, if not, I mean, throughout the, throughout the year, they're not really making money. And what I was informed is that in the fourth quarter is when the store even be- – is when the store actually became profitable. It's in the fourth quarter, is in around you know the, the the holiday period. So the fourth quarter is what October through December. Correct? Yep, pretty and, much. Yeah. So, so you have to keep that in mind too, and that's that's a uh, that's just one of the things that I picked up at least in the the retail capacity it was I, I was working in. I'm sure that's applicable to other uh, businesses as well, and it wasn't just exclusive to where I was working, but. I mean, this is a time, like I said, this is a time for businesses to turn a profit, <laughs> you know, maybe put themselves in the in the black and pull, pull themselves out of the red. But, you know, I think that there's a good there's a good percentage of people when you think about what this time of the year means to people and what this signifies is that, you know, I see a lot of folks just they're just caught up in buying stuff, buying stuff for people and not really thinking about the consequences if you don't have the means to do so and going into debt or taking out loans or borrowing money to buy these gifts. And I feel like it's, you know, there's, there's a, there's a component. I mean, it is consumerism, uh, you know, is, is the culprit, but if you turn on TV, that's all you see in this commercials. I mean, commercials are really just all commercials are people trying to sell you their products. That's, that's, that's pretty much, if if it's not that, it's like some you see like a make a wish foundation where they want you to donate money to uh some type of organization or philanthropy. And that's 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 even uh that's even a catch that's a catch as well because you don't know how much of that cost or percentage of that cost is going to the administration. And that's where people get got when they be uh donating to these organizations. Yeah, be careful with that. Always do your research if you had time for that. But I understand if you're on Facebook checking your feed that you might not have time to do research. You got to like some pictures and stuff. Man, I get it. Uh, so, so, uh, but the one, th- all right. So, I mean, so I'm, I'm going back in time. I'm going back, 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 way back into, uh, because I, I really, I'm trying to go to the origins of when, like, things for me in my life, I started to identify just how heavy consumerism plays in this this time of the year and how people like my issue is really people going into debt and people spending money that they do not have to buy gifts for people you know and then we get into like the santa thing quick story about santa claus all right look if you listen to this and you have kids and they believe in santa you need to probably turn the episode off right now but uh but Santa, when I was when I was like four or five years old, my brother told me Santa Claus wasn't real. All right. So I knew at a young age that now why he told me this, I don't know his motivations for telling me that. But um, that really, when I think about it, I mean, as much as kids always, you know, they believe in Santa and it's exciting and all that other stuff. I feel like it kind of pulled the appreciation away from the people that are actually putting the work in to get you all the gifts and all these material items that you end up getting. So, like, I remember after my brother told me that, I don't think I shared, I don't think I shared that with anybody else, like any other kids or stuff like that. But what was funny, what was funny about that is that, you know, four or five years old and kids are still, how old were you, Joe, when people, when like kids started 
to realize that Santa was not real? Um, you start catching wind around kindergarten, but it's official in first or second grade when it's very apparent. Yeah, so I mean, and the teachers are in, look. The teachers are in on it too. They're all in on this uh scheme of this, but but I just remember like that was the first time I was actually a spectator and watching like other people believe in something that I knew for a fact was not real. And that's probably why I'm as skeptical as I am today. Cause I saw kids and adults engaging in this behavior where they're trying to prop up this imaginary person. And it's not even a real thing. And it's like, I know you're lying to me. And I'm not like, I didn't know what being delusional meant as a five-year-old, but these other five year, five or six year olds, they were, they were delusional. Come on, man. It's, you got to realize, man, it's an outlet to get kids to behave, man. You got to give kids. That's, that's, that's one thing I learned over time. Like things like this was in play to, um, I mean, of course people took it, took it too far as with anything, but I feel like Christmas was one of those things that was implemented to, uh, get people to recognize, um, you know, to build more morality. So good like, behavior. yeah, good behavior, good oh, morale, man. um, more or less, uh, it's a lot of things that come with it, but, uh, more or less it was, i i I imagine the, the best intent was to actually bring people closer to each other and actually treat each other, uh, within unison. Uh, when you think about like religion, that's what religion is supposed to do. <laughs> but like we said, we got our extremists that, uh, take it too far and kind of ruin it for everybody. Yeah. I saw it was interesting that, you know, looking back on it, how, I mean, I know it's like creative, like the two fairy and, you know, maybe the Easter bunny and things like that. Maybe. Yeah. I could have I mean, without the two fairy. Maybe it's just something to, you know, keep you entertained and, you know, ma- maintain some creativity, I guess, but. Keep the kids in, in, interested, man. That's how you get kids to behave. These practices were implemented to keep a kid on track. That's what I think or that's how I perceive things. Like I was taught these things uh, to keep, not only because it was tradition in my family, but it was also a formulation or a way to kind of like keep your people, you know, in line. Yeah. No, all you had to tell me was, you know, Marcus, if you don't act right, you're not going to get anything. I'm like, all right. <laughs> but you were good. Kid. You was a good kid. You know, think about those kids that were like, wouldn't behave for nothing. But if you talked about Santa, they'll shut up then. You know what I'm saying? Like, you'll get a lump of coal if you don't do this. Yeah, man. That's a, you know, get a psychology. Scare, yeah, scare tactic. <laughs> but. Like, Fairy. I used to get that all the time too, man. Uh, not to sidetrack from the holiday, but it was two fairy, same difference. Oh, well, if you don't put your two hundred pill, you won't get any money. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, well, it's it's interesting. I guess you know, looking back, it seems silly, but you know, everybody has a different motivation. So. Oh, uh, without a doubt. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. So, all right. So, what one of the the other things that I think is interesting is that. Like these gift exchanges at work in these things. I can remember uh when I was doing case management, I remember that, you know, they want to do this gift exchange. And I'm thinking, like, I just took a significant pay cut to come work here and I got life expenses, I have business expenses. Like, I'm not really trying to participate in anything like this. I'm pretty sure that employers have uh kind of cut back on that, knowing what's going on this year and everything that's going on. But, you know, those are uh, scenarios in which I feel that they put, you kind of put people in a situation where they feel like you have to spend money just to be included in a group. So I remember when they asked me, I was like, no, I'm not doing it. You know? So, (laughs) so, uh, you know, of course I put me in a little special space, but it's like, I'm not about to go out here and spend this money. Like, you know, people don't know how your money is divvied up and, if you have a business, if you're doing anything with expenses and your business is not like generating huge amounts of revenue, you're using the money you make from your job to put money into your business that is not yet profitable. So nine times, well, actually 10 times out of 10, you're right. Unless you're doing something legal, you know, <laughs> but yeah, 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 10 times out of 10, you will be taking money out of your own personal account and yeah. 
get to your business. So, you know, at the time I was just I was just kind of like, no, I'm not doing it. And people I think they probably thought it was weird that I didn't participate. And they probably think it's, you know, it's, you know, being antisocial and things like that. But, you know, like at that point in time, all my money was it was all spoken for. My budget was tight where I spent my money was tight. It doesn't matter what day on the calendar it is like the shoot, whatever, whatever was going on at the time, like that money was already allocated. It was already spoken for. So I can, you know, just break away from the budget that I set in place. I mean, and that just is what it is. I think it's hard for some people to say no. And then, you know, you might put yourself in a situation where you find yourself borrowing money, you know, from somebody or pulling something from some other expense that you have and putting it into that just so you can remain included in the group and not feel left out. Uh, and that's a situation that, I mean, most people don't want to get put in. And look, I have the ability to, you know, like, I'll be all right being the only person who doesn't participate in something, just something like that, just because I know that, you know, it's like I, I got, you know, when, when you when you have goals and stuff, like you got to understand that you're not, you know, you're not going to be able to participate in every single thing that people have and, you know, your budget and what you do with your money, you know, that's, that's your business. And if people don't understand that, then, you know, you got to evaluate that relationship and those people around you. But, you know, you got to make sure that you're taking care of the stuff you need to take care of first before, you know, I think in my opinion, before you start to worry about the perception of what other people will think if you don't participate in this, uh, these voluntary activities, especially around the holidays with the gifts and all that other, you know, all those other things that go are going on. But what do you think about that, Joe? You got to take care of home before you can take care of anything else, man. I mean, if you're not taking care of the ground that you stand on, how you going to venture out, how you going to grow, how you going to get bigger. It all starts with them. So take, take care of in-house first. <laughs> yeah. That's what you do. That's what you do. It just might, it just might come at the cost of being, you know, perceived as cheap, difficult. cheap. Yeah. Cheap as well. Difficult, non-participatory. Uh, Stingy. Uh, yeah. All those things. Yeah. Joe, that's probably what everybody thought about me for doing that too. And I, really, <laughs> I really didn't. I mean, I really didn't care because I know, like, I know where the I know where the money is going, and it's not like I'm opting out of the activity to go to the casino where I'm going and you know buying clothes or something with it. Like, it's actually I'm actually covering these ongoing business expenses. I'll be lucky if I can go two days without a transaction, without something being pulled out of my account for a business a, a expense. So it's, I mean, you got to manage your money and it's Look, the, the, the less money you have available, the more tight you have to be about what you put out there. You just won't be able to participate in a, everything. And sometimes you got to sit that stuff out. Uh, but I think that's something maybe we'll do an episode on another time. It's just, you know, the uh, budgeting, budgeting, but also the cost of being different and what it is and just, you know, how it is to maneuver a space where you're the only person that's doing something, but you know what you're doing is right and you have purpose. But uh, it's it's difficult. It's, it can be difficult to maneuver when the people around you don't understand why it is you do what you do. But another topic for another day, perhaps. Uh, definitely, because you can go down the rabbit hole with that one. Like there's a lot yeah. of factors that come into that. Yeah, that's why I didn't even open that up, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> uh so Joe, have you ever all right, so you've ever felt pressure to buy a gift for someone? Not I mean, it can be the holiday, but just in general. Yeah. Without a doubt. I get pressure to buy stuff all the time. And sometimes people don't realize they're putting that type of pressure on you. Uh sometimes it's you uh wanting to more or less save face. Uh sometimes it's you wanting to opt out and you give people X amount of reasons why you don't want to do something. Like for example, you might tell somebody, like, hey, I don't want anything for Christmas. And the main reason why you probably don't want anything for Christmas is because you don't want to get them anything for Christmas. Yeah. And that's no disrespect, but you know, like, hey, bro, like, I don't want nothing. And I really don't want to feel obligated to giving you anything. Because if you gave me something, I didn't give you nothing in return. I'm going to be an asshole and you may not say it flat out, but 
you know, you don't want to be anybody's pity party either. You know what I'm saying? You don't want somebody ragging on you for something like that. But that's only if you care about that person, really. If I don't care, I'm just going to be like, look, don't give me nothing. Blah, blah, blah. I won't be giving you nothing in return. You know, like there's ways that you can navigate through that uh, for the most part. Um, there are a few special cases where there's people that have come from different cultural backgrounds where they just don't get it. Um, but I mean, Hey, you li- it's, it's part of life. Like that, that stuff happens all the time. I'm always obligated to paying for stuff that I don't want to pay for. And sometimes I just do it just because I don't want to deal with what comes with afterwards. You just want to keep the heat off you. Yeah. More or less. If I'm doing something, I'm doing it to keep the heat off of me more than my likely. And that Joe is where the problem that's, I think that's where the problem is, is I don't think it's, I don't think it's like an individual dynamic. I think it's like a societal norm that has created that conflict. Yeah. I might've made it personal, but I was just trying to give examples, but you're right. Like it's not necessarily a personal thing. This is a cultural society based thing. Like, that's just how our society works. Yeah. And that's why it's important to, you know, sometimes you have to be a little bit different when you identify to some things. I mean, just because everybody, not everybody, but just because a bulk of people are doing some things isn't, I mean, it doesn't necessarily mean that that's quote unquote the right thing to do or that's what you should do. That just means that that's what's accepted as normal. And you have to decide for yourself if, you know, you're going to participate and that, you know, or not. Now, it's different if you want to start saying, like, well, everybody drives on the right side of the road. So I'm going to drive on the left side of the road in the wrong direction. Like, that's stupid. Don't do that. All right. <laughs> that's, that's, that's unnecessary. But, you know, that's just for uh, someone who maybe want to take it to the extreme and just try to be different for no reason, <laughs> for no reason. But uh, but that's a good example. Uh, I remember I was working with this guy and he was uh He's telling me about this lady he was dating. Now, this was younger. I was I was probably, yeah, bro, this might have been like five, six years ago. So I might have tried to give this man some advice or I might have just kept my mouth shut. Right. Uh, but, you know, he was telling me that, you know, the, uh, you know, he's telling me like his girlfriend is pressuring him to buy him this jewelry at the time. I know exactly what, how much money this guy is making. And I know that he does not have the money, but he felt so pressured to buy it. And he went ahead and he bought it and he jammed himself up by uh, making that purchase. And it wasn't, I mean, they, I mean, you know, they ended up breaking up, you know, was, I mean, we all, everybody who was involved in that knew that was going to happen. But, uh, you know, but he was so, I think he was so pressed because it was the holidays. And then, you know, he was with somebody that was pressing him on getting that stuff. Cause those that like getting something was just uh, very important to this individual that he put himself in a bad situation and you know, you never know, like you might go into debt and this, this is the thing. Like you might feel pressed to get somebody a gift and then you'll dip into like, I read this article or this article that said going to, if you don't have the money going to your savings to buy gifts, I'm like, why, why would you do that? But that said, those savings are there for a reason. So if you go out and you spend $500 of your savings and then you have an issue with your car or something happens in your house or you have some sort of medical accident and then, and then you need that money that you just spend on this unnecessary gift. Like you got to keep those, those reserves are there for a reason, you know, like that's a whole different, I mean, that's a, that's an entirely different budget for gifts. And if, you know, I feel like if you, you know, budget out for gifts, if there's no money in that, that pool, then there are no gifts no gifts that you can physically go to the store and buy. I think there's that there's a lot of other options. And I've, although these things are difficult to find, I find in some places that there are, are, are alternatives to people who maybe, you know, like are on lean in, in lean times and they don't have a lot of resources. Like there's a lot of things that, you know, people can do if they feel the need to, uh, you know, want to give people gifts and still, and even though they don't have the money, there's still other things that you can do. Like, you know, if you're in close proximity, you know, watching somebody's kids, making them dinner, doing something for them that's helpful to them in some capacity, something that they would enjoy. You know, so there's there's other things that you can do. 
And I feel like, you know, if you're listening, I mean, I think if you're listening to this and you find yourself in a situation where someone even like it even becomes an issue that you're not buying somebody something during this period of the year or at any time, uh, you know, if you feel if you feel like, you know, you're you're pressured to do it, then I mean, I, I think that that's a relationship that needs to be uh, reevaluated because, you know, I can confidently say none of my like none of the people that are close to me. Like this, it's it's not like nobody's keeping tabs. Nobody's keeping tabs on that kind of stuff. Like you get something, you get something. If you don't, you don't. And I think a lot of stuff, I think a lot of stuff, um, and Joe can attest for this, a lot of stuff for us, I think it's just like whatever's going on, you know, it doesn't matter what time of the year it is. Like Joe sent me something in the, the middle of the year, like not associated with any kind of date whatsoever, you know? So you know, I think that's how gifts should be. I have a problem with the, like the Hallmark holidays. Valentine's Day is the worst. I think it's the worst. Uh, but, you know, just when you feel like you're in a position where you're pressured to buy something and you're buying something out of sheer obligation, then, you know, you really have to ask yourself, like, where, where where's the real value in that and why are you doing it? Uh, you know, and things like that. But, you know, I hate to see people, especially during this time, especially with everything that's going on, to feel like you're in a situation where you have to go into debt have to take out a loan, like all this stuff that I'm reading, Joe, a lot of it, 90 to 95 percent, they are trying to give you an out. Like they're like, go take out a personal loan, go borrow the money, go do something like just find a way to pay for these gifts. And there's no referral back to maybe what this season is all about or anything. It's just, you know, making sure that you find some way to get the means to acquire these items for people. I hear you. Um, I definitely have my take on it as far as I do agree with you wholeheartedly. One thing that people don't consider, and I'm not saying that you do or you don't consider it or you don't value people because that would be a lie. We wouldn't be here talking right now. But some people really think that relationships outweigh financials. And in some regards, they do. But With that being said, you really need to figure out your balance. Are you willing to go broke for somebody? I'm not saying you have to. um, And I'm not telling you not to. But if that person is really worth it where you think you can get a return on investment in other ways, I say, why not? It's no different than what people call tricking. Um, (laughs) You know, like guy or female rather spends money on whoever they're interested in and it's just giving them uh basically they're giving them a piece of their blessing i don't think it's wrong or anything's wrong with giving somebody something you worked for and giving it to share your blessing that's your way uh without words to show somebody your token of appreciation for them, whether they like it or not, is not the point. The point is when you think about it, this person actually thought about it and they spent their hard on money to give that to you just to let you know how much you're valued in their life. That's the whole point. So I'm not trying to make things more complicated than what it is because this all is very complex. But what Marcus is saying holds value, too. Are you really going to spend X amount of dollars on somebody that you don't have the best relationship with? Maybe you're doing it to uh, men make amends. Maybe you owe that person. I don't know. Whatever the case may be, you need to make a real assessment of how you want to go about something like that. I would never recommend to go in debt to buy something for somebody. I don't see what's hard by having a conversation if it's necessary, if they don't know what you're working with. I don't see what's so hard about having a conversation like, look, I ain't got it like that. I want to give you something like that. But this is what I all I can give you at this point in time. Whatever happened to people being creative? Like it don't necessarily have to be a financial thing. People can be creative. You could make a whole day of events that costs little to nothing to show your token appreciation to somebody. 
And I think a lot of people miss that. Yeah, that's a good point. And I don't, I don't know if I can say where it got lost at, but it's lost. <laughs> <laughs> but it's it's lost, uh, you know. But I think that's just about every. All right, so everybody's different. Everybody's different. Some people they want material goods that cookie cutter writing a card where uh, like a handwritten card or something that you do that doesn't cost money they're not interested in that that's not the type of person they are um you know some people they're gonna they, they, they just require that material th those material items and uh that's something that you know you have to identify with the you know in the people that you i mean that we all choose to be around we we have to identify that if th these are people that we want to um, engage and interact with on a, a daily basis or a routine basis. So, I mean, you just have to look for something for some, like just like a statement for some people, material things matter and that's, what's important to them. Other people, it's the thought that counts. And if you put, you know, a lot of work into maybe preparing a meal or doing something, you know, like that, that's low cost. That don't mean more to them than any real material item would. But I mean, that's what makes us in, in, individuals. That's what makes us people. And that's, that's what's, unique about it. And if you're, you know, if you, you know, so it's important to take the time to get to know people. I'm not saying you need to test somebody, but you know, if you give somebody, if you cook somebody dinner and they like, well, I wish you would have just took me to Red Lobster. I was like, well, we have a problem because my meals, because my meals are quality, but I don't know. Look, I just, listen, I don't know what other people are doing, but I know my stuff is solid, but, uh, but, you know, like I said, man, we're all individuals, so that's something you have to engage for yourself. Uh, but you know, just just the main thing, just the main thing that you know, I just I just take issue with is this season. Like it's a it's a it's a time. This this period of time is uh, a time where people, you know, they get into the holiday spirit. Maybe some of the the rudest people become some of the nicest people you've ever met. Uh, it's like they a transformer or something. Uh, you know, and it can be a it can be a great time for a lot of people, uh, but it can also be a stressful time for a lot of folks, especially dealing with what we're de dealing with uh, right now. So, you know, I just I hope that and I'll close on this. Show, I just hope that we all are taking time to, you know, appreciate the people that, you know, we have around us and, you know, be thankful for what we have versus what we don't have and, you know, take take time to, you know, let the people that you appreciate, you know, you let those people know um, in however way you, you see fit. Uh, but, you know, please be understanding of the fact that not everybody's doing well and some people are struggling and some people are going to go into debt to get, they might be going in, a, in debt to get you a gift that they can't really afford. And that's unfortunate, but it's a reality. Um, and I hope that, you know, I hope that people will speak up and say something. And I know firsthand how much it can make somebody, how bad it will make somebody feel to not be able to get somebody a gift, somebody that they care about a gift during the holidays. And uh, I don't think that making somebody feel like that is worth it. So I'll close on that, Joe. All in all, man, it all comes down to communication and sometimes you can't meet people's standards and sometimes you got to communicate with them that, hey, I'm you know, your standards are too high. You need to cut them, bring them down a notch, vice versa, you know. So it really is all about perception. But I would say don't go broke if you um, really need that. You know, your priorities should not be you should hold value over your priorities over anything else. Otherwise, you're just not going to work. So make sure you work on you and what's going on in your circumference before you actually start giving. Um, I know that sounds crazy, but realistically, how are you going to keep rolling if you don't invest in yourself? Exactly. Well, as usual. Uh, you know, be safe during this time. Take care of yourselves, and you know we're we're not going anywhere, man. I hope this meant something to you. Uh, share this episode. Share the clips that we post on uh, YouTube. Uh, you know, 
If you want to check us out on social, check us out. I'm usually posting stuff a few times a week. A few times a week, I try. Um, <laughs> check it out. Enjoy your holiday. Uh, you know, but you know, take care. Be safe. Take care. Happy holidays.